the Afrocalt sound system was conceived in the Strong Room Studio in Shoreditch, London, while Simon Emerson was producing Baba Mal's Lam Toro album. He had just returned from Senegal and was working with the Irish Ellen Pipes player Davy Spillane on a collaboration between West African and traditional Irish music. The result was one of the most powerful, evocative and moving pieces of music he had recorded. During the session, Davy started telling me how he'd always felt that Irish music had come from Africa and how some of the earliest European tribes were dark-skinned or black. After the session, we decided that we'd send a tape of the music we'd recorded to the artist Jamie Reed. He'd filled the Strongroom Studios with swirling Celtic and alchemical symbols. We both agreed that this had contributed to the performance. About three weeks later, I received in the post a letter from Jamie and the artwork that evolved into the afro Celt cover. Hi, my name's James McNally. I'm the baron and whistle player with the afro Celts. I was born in Ireland and brought up in London. I played in bands and competitions until about 18, uh, when I won the All-Ireland on accordion, piano and baron. I was uh, very excited and intrigued when Simon asked me to play a part in the forming of the Afro Celts. Uh, to me, there seems to be a right balance between man and machine that hadn't been found before with this concept. We met at Tottenham to put together a quick rehearsal for the Whirly gig. We didn't know how a rave audience would react to us, but uh, to our surprise it was incredible. The atmosphere and reception we got was overwhelming. During the set, we dropped down to Jess Baron. I did a solo, accompanied by a couple of dancers, and, and uh, later joined by Ronan on the pipes. The place just went wild, it erupted, it was incredible. And from a rave audience, I think it was pretty wild. The gig was just the start of what was to be, for me, one of the most stimulating weeks of my life. Playing with such good Irish musicians as Ronan Brown and Irla was it, it's spiritually binding in itself. It's something that like I've always done, played with other Irish musicians. You kind of like take it for granted and it, it's fantastic in itself, but when you combine with uh, players from other ethnic cultures, or the likes of uh, Masamba and Cowding, it just takes, I think it takes you to a new level of inspiration. My favourite piece from the album is Cow's Tune. I couldn't believe how Irish it sounded. And uh, this tune was from Senegal. It made me feel as if I was at home. Or well, maybe I am from Senegal, maybe. My 
My name is Ayu Bogada and I'm from Kenya. That's the western part of Kenya, just around Lake Victoria. I play an instrument known as uh, Nyatiti, which is a kind of a lyre, eight-string lyre. And it's found um, all the way from Egypt down to um, East Africa, uh, around the, the Nile Valley. For me, the recording week was actually the first time that um, I began to meet producers and musicians, uh, high-caliber musicians and producers from Britain and many other countries. My name is uh, Irla Olinard and uh, I'm, I'm a singer from the Irish traditional singing world. Uh, but I'm not a folk singer. I sing songs in Irish, rather older songs, several hundred years old, usually in Gaelic, but sometimes in English. And I've spent 20 years, even though I'm only in my early 30s, I've spent more than 20 years singing. Um, started singing as a child, recorded first when I was 10 uh, and younger, on radio, TV and on several records. I think because I come from um, such a remote part of Ireland and I sing very old songs in Gaelic, the opportunity to sing to other people's work who were sensitive to my, my voice and to where I was coming from was a, was a real, real saviour. It was an amazing experience because I didn't know what to expect. I had absolutely no idea. I spoke to um, Simon Emerson on the phone. And, you know, how are you? What are you doing? What do you want to do next? And, Nobody could really tell me what I had to do. The task was unclear until I got to the studios. Most of the week I spent inside in a dark space the size of um, a telephone kiosk um, with a tube mic in front of me. And it was brilliant because for me, all I had to do really was swim in and out of these fantastic textures that Simon and Ron and Joe had composed over, over many months. And it was a really liberating experience. Because I live in Dublin, I'm kind of, I'm a hybrid at this stage. I'm urbanised. I live in an English-speaking world. I, I listen to the music of, of the concrete jungle. I really wouldn't have had a chance to explore my, my pathway into that jungle without this um, first step, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. 